Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy tutorial on how to do spiral baubles. We're going to base these on glass baubles but I'm going to show you two things today. First how to get this fun and nice glitter effect on your baubles. Let me pick this one up and show you so you can see here. So I'm going to do the glitter effect but also show you how to get it so you get these spirals nice and neat and cover over your bauble. And towards the end of the video I'll just discuss how to put other veneers on so you can do other designs. So you don't have to just do the glitter technique with this one. It's a quick and easy tutorial, don't need a lot in the way of equipment and it's a fun one to do. And once you know how to do this you'll be able to use whatever designs you want and create all sorts of wonderful baubles. So let's start with what you're going to need for today's project. So for the tutorial today we're going to cover a glass bauble. This is the sort of one um, I'm going to be using. I'm going to use whole packs of clay. This will give me more than enough I need to for one bauble but it's easier to use larger amounts of clay and have enough. In fact this will give me enough to do two baubles um, but I will be making the veneers with whole packs of clay. This is the Pacific Blue and this is the Peppermint. I'm using Fimo Soft today. All brands of clay will work equally well for this and just choose whatever colour scheme you want. Then we're going to need some micro glitters. So this is a very fine um, glitter. You can usually buy it in bags like this or sort of big containers. I happen to decant it into a bag and put my little um, plastic spoon in. I just find it easier to use like that. And I've got the gold that's going to go onto the blue and then the blue here that's going to go onto the peppermint. You need some form of texture sheet. This is Lisa Pavelka's tooled leather texture sheet. It's a good one for what we're using today, but again, any texture sheet will do for that. It's always got nice deep ridges and deep imprint line. And then the decoration around the side of the bauble is this. This is actually called rope ribbon. Um, that's certainly what they call it in the UK. I don't know what they call it elsewhere. It's really easily available just before Christmas because people use it to wrap parcels. And when it's unbound, it's like this. I'm using this one's two millimeter. This is 1.8 millimeter. Um, so but anything between one and two millimeters is good. But it's the, it's the stuff that um, it sort of it, it unravels. I don't know if you can see that. And it's made up of lots of different strands and because of that it just sits and sticks really well to the polymer clay and when you make it just slightly taut and I think it looks good in the finished piece so that's what we're going to use for that. Other things we're going to need to use today a pair of scissors, a couple of sheets of just plain A4 paper and on that you're going to need at least one strip um, cut off A4 paper just a small strip and um, we're going to use that as a measuring tool you need one of those per bauble that you do tissue blade as always, craft knife, both those for cutting the clay, a small sheet of um, cellophane wrap, this is actually um, florist wrap, it comes off the big sheets but any form of cellophane will be good so have a look at any packaging you've had through recently, just a sheet that's big enough that you can we can make ourselves a little template going around the bauble and it needs to be something that's um, flexible, if you haven't got any of this tracing paper will do but something that's completely clear as you'll see when we go through it is just much easier to use. Roller, knitting needle just to sort of um, roll the clay together but also to make the grooves, a nice thin paintbrush and some liquid clay. I've just decanted this into a little pot because I just find it very easy because we're going to um, use the paintbrush and take that in and out quite a lot. And then some form of sheet to work on. I'm using a laminated sheet just because it's easy, but baking parchment, wax paper, just something that's flexible um, so it's easy to peel your pieces off rather than working directly onto the tile because we're going to be using big um, sheets of clay here and it's quite difficult to be able to then take them off a tile. This is, as always, the one that is freely downloadable from printablepaper.net. But I say we're not using grid system today, so you don't need this. I'm just using it because it's one of the things I use. You're going to need two markers. I'm happy to use Sharpies, but some form of indelible marker or felt tip pen, something like that, is really handy. And preferably, it wants to be something that's then not going to rub off because we're going to need to see what we mark. Um, two colours makes life a lot easier. Doesn't have to be pink and black, but two colours you can really see the difference between the two. So I just happen to have gone for pink and black today. And some form of sticky tape. 
I know Sellotape is the brand that people use most often in the UK. Um, this happens to be called Ultra Tape, um, but any form of sticky tape um, because we need that to remove the glitter in a process later on. If you're going to be covering a plastic bauble, and I will cover that with all the safety details you need to know, and please do read that, just don't go ahead and cover your plastic bauble without listening to what I say about that. But if you are doing that, then you'll need some scrap clay, about one packet worth, and um, a beading needle, because we're going to just create some perforations in that. And then to finish off our baubles at the end, all your baubles should come, hopefully, with some form of, of um, fixing will go around the neck of them which will come apart like that. Um, you can actually buy this separately again certainly at the time when it gets to Christmas time of year most of the craft shops will sell these separately so if when you've covered your bauble you find that the one you started with originally doesn't fit on go and get yourself another set and we'll need some form of glue um, to fit that onto the bauble at the end because of the weight the added weight of the clay we've put on you'll need something so either something like you who or if you've got a glue gun then a glue gun can come in handy but again please do follow the instructions for using any forms of glue or glue gun um, to make sure you don't harm yourself or anyone else and last but not least always always pasta machine wet wipes and some tissues just to keep everything nice and clean and tidy so that's all the equipment we need so now let's get on to the fun part and let's start working with that clay and decorating our bauble Okay, so in the video I'm using today, I'm going to be using a glass bauble. However, you can, if you're very careful, and if you get the right type, also cover plastic baubles. Now, it's very difficult to know beforehand whether or not they're going to work, and I can't guarantee, obviously, that yours will work. And what I don't want is anyone to actually put this in the oven for the whole thing to um, bake or burn. So you're very much going to have to play it by ear and try your own um, baubles out. This is a, quite a cheap plastic bauble. Just a little sort of um, pull off top here. So we'll take the top off and we're just going to cover this bit. Now, rather than covering completely with the veneer we're going to use, I would always recommend when you're covering a plastic bauble to put a layer of scrap clay on first. That way, if for any reason it does burn in the oven, obviously you can um, not have any lost hours of work having created a nice patterned um, veneer but also it helps protect the plastic inside slightly. And sometimes you'll find that the bauble inside might melt a little bit, but the clay surround, the scrap clay has stayed in place, in which case you then have a solid enough um, basis on which to work. So as I say, plastic ones use at your own discretion and at your own risk. So I've got our scrap clay. This is about one pack worth of scrap clay, as I mentioned earlier. Put it through on a medium setting on my pasta machine. So setting number three, where setting zero is my thickest and nine is my thinnest. So I'm just going to chop off the end here. I'm just going to wrap that round enough so I can see where it went round once and cut slightly thinner because we're going to pull it round. So having got our sheet of clay ready to cover, I'm going to take a little bit of liquid clay and just dot that all over. Not too much, just enough to make it tacky. You don't want it to be too um, runny or anything. And then wipe your hands. And now I'm going to take my clay, put it around because I made it shorter. It's going to need a little bit of a pull and I just find that helps it stick to whatever I'm covering, covering better. Pull down towards the bottom. And with my craft knife, I'm just going to cut away right the way down to nearly halfway down the bauble because you can then fold the clay over, see where your line is you need to cut and cut away the excess. Put it on, cut down, pull away the excess. And the sheet I had was to start with, as you saw, was a good sort of one and a half times the width 
of your bauble and that way you know it's, you've got enough to fold over the ends. Just push it together. What you don't want to have is um, more than one layer. So do make sure you pull off the excess. If you've got any bits where they sort of you thought you'd taken them off and they don't, just go back and shave that off. Because what we're looking for is a nice even coating that we can then use to put our patterned veneer on. When you've got a stage you've only got a triangle left, you should be able to smooth up both sides so you can see then where you need to cut down there. And that should give you more or less the perfect fit. And then with a smoothing tool or a blunt ended needle I'm just rolling over all the gaps here. I'm going to roll roughly towards the bottom so that any air, if there is any air trapped, it's going to go towards there and I should be able to see it popping up as a little bubble. When I've got it roughly smooth, I'm going to turn my attention to the top and just repeat with the top. Take the excess away from the top, just cutting it there and then on a clean smooth work surface just roll it around with your hand. So all I'm doing is letting the rolling motion smooth out any bumps or issues I've got. You can roll it on its side, roll it more towards the top, or just keep going around. So I've got my hand sort of cupped when I'm doing it. I so say just letting the motion of the flat surface smooth away any of the lumps and bumps. And there we go. So when your piece is finished being covering, just take um, a sharp needle and I'm just going to put lots and lots of dots all over it to make sure that any air bubbles are pierced and when it bakes you don't get any trapped air bubbles coming to the top. When you're done, put it into a little bowl or whatever it is you're using for baking and I cover the whole thing with foil. Put it in the oven and if it's the first time I'm baking a particular brand of plastic bauble I will stay by that oven the whole time I'm baking it. Um, bake as per the manufacturer's instructions for the clay you are using but constantly check it so I will open that door every few minutes just to make sure there's no smell, there's no sign of anything happening um, and a second anything does happen I'm going to just take it all out, take it outside and put it out in the fresh air. Um, but hopefully, like me, you will find that you can actually cover them and they will work. But as I say, I'm not giving any guarantees here. Please monitor, be safe at all times. You don't want any of these burning in the oven. The second you think anything might be going wrong, just take it out, take it outside and always be safe. But that said, let's get back to the um, glass one that I am covering and I'll show you what we're going to do with that one. So we need to mark round our ball where the spirals are going to go. So I'm going to work with the, the glass ball today. So I'm going to leave the top in just for this next bit, this first bit. I'm going to got my two colours of Sharpie pen. I'm going to start with the pink one and then move on to the black. And I've got the strip of um, A4 paper. So they're all ready to go. We're going to take a little bit of the sellotape. Now I found myself, this just happens to be a cut, but I found myself something whereby if I put the Sharpie on it, it's going to come halfway up the height of the bauble. So that's what we're looking for. So when you've found something like that, take a little bit of the sticky tape and just stick your pen or your marker on there to keep that nice and stable. 
and we've left this top bit on at the moment because it's slightly easier to twist the bauble around and keep it upright when you've got a top bit than it is without it. It's still not a perfect science so it's not particularly easy to do but hopefully if you take your bauble up to the pen, I'm trying to do it so the camera's, I'm not in the way of the camera here, and just twist it round you should get a line around your bauble that roughly joins up. So it's not perfect but it's near enough to the halfway point that I can use it. So I'm not going to firm that line up at any point now but I can say that is slightly below the middle. So I'm going to make one line going up across my board. That'll be my start point. And now using that line as the bottom, if I now put this paper around so that that line's at the bottom. Can you see I'm more or less going to be at the centre of my bauble. So keeping that there, I'm just going to go around the bauble using this piece of paper as a measurement. When I get back to the bottom end, give it a bit of a mark. Get your scissors and chop off. You can retest if you want to to make sure that you have got a piece that is the right size, going all the way around the middle of the bauble. And then once you are happy with it, fold this piece of paper in half, half again, and then half again, and really press down on these creases, because this is going to be your measuring sheet. Open it out, and whilst those creases are still nice and fresh, Mark in on the line where they are. Because you can now, from starting from that top point, and keeping it as we did, the, the um, paper to the top of that, I'm going to go down and work my way around the bauble and give myself my eight lines for the eight stripes and hopefully when you get to the other end you should find you're more or less spot on. What we're now going to do is imagine, as it is in this one, that's a good one to start with, imagine that this is a piece coming out of the middle of your top. So we're going to take this line and just go towards the top and repeat. Constantly doing it I'm going to take this out now because it's easier to have that out. Constantly doing it as if you're going towards the middle of the top piece. Now, as with most things, please don't worry about being absolutely 100% accurate. These are guidelines only. Um, and as you'll see when we put the clay on, we do have room to manoeuvre. But having done that, so you've got all your lines going upwards, now start to take them following that line down just a little bit down towards the bottom. Just keeping the flat line as you go. So don't do too much, just enough, because what you should then see is that when you turn it over, you can actually see both sides of the line sufficiently to draw over. And you can match all of your pieces up. And now you've got your eight lines down the side. And one of the reasons why I didn't do this line too detailed to start with is because you can now use exactly your same sheet of paper to give you your three lines going up the side. So one, two, three, and then just repeat all the way around. And once you've got them all marked with a straight line, Simply join your marks. Okay, so there you've got your grid system on your bauble. We're now going to swap pens because now we're going to draw the lines which will actually make our squares. It's up to you which direction you want your spirals to go to. When I do mine, I just naturally orientate to going across each of those squares, bottom, um, bottom right to top left. If you want to do it the other way, then obviously your spirals would go the other way. So with your black marker pen, just do that.
across all the boxes, so all the shapes you're going to do, whichever direction you're doing, you're going to do the same. And it's just a straight line, don't worry about curving it at this stage. You can see there, going along towards the top. Now the bottom does need a bit of a curve because you haven't got any um, top bits, so they've all got to go in towards the point. So again, start as you if you were going towards the top right and then just give it a bit of a curl in. Towards the top, curl in. And now you have your swirls drawn in around the outside of your bauble. So what we need to do now is to take that piece of cellophane and draw ourselves a template. Here's my piece of cellophane and my recommendations would be twofold for this one. Firstly, make sure you put your cellophane in such a way that it's going to reach from the top to the bottom of your bauble. Choose um, a selection where you've actually got quite a nice shape so I'm going to choose this one where it's not too thick and not too thin and start at one end only so I'm going to start at the top here and draw just a little bit once you've drawn that move your finger slightly down draw a bit keep it in place move your finger slightly down a bit more and just keep doing that all the way down What you should end up with is a weird sort of truncated S shape because obviously this is at the top. So at this stage I will then neaten this out by just drawing it more smoothly. And I will often put the end tip in because it's handy to have that bit because sometimes you want to turn these up the other way. The other thing I will do is I will write the word up whilst I'm writing it so you know which way you need to put this spiral to do that because if you cut your pieces the wrong way around they simply won't fit. You can't turn them upside down, they just will not fit. So you need to know which way you want to put this face upwards when you're cutting your piece. So I'm just going to cut that piece out and then we'll check whether it does work around the side of the bauble. So just put it back on and see whether it's going to work. And check it with more than one of your pieces just to make sure that you didn't you choose one that was a completely irregular size. Remembering of course that we will be able to move things around slightly. That looks pretty good as far as I'm concerned so I'm happy to use that one. So that's the hard bit done. Let's go on to the fun bit and create our veneers. I've conditioned the peppermint polymer clay and I've put it through a thickish setting on my pasta machine. Um, setting number two on my pasta machine where naught is the thickest and nine is the thinnest. And I've made sure it's a right width that I can take my little cutouts from. I've got it on my measuring sheet um, so it's easy to take off and remove. And I've got a couple of pieces of A4 paper because we're about to put some glitter on this so we need the A4 paper to remove the excess and so we don't waste any. So I'm going to take my glitter and I'm going for a contrast here, the dark blue glitter onto the light blue. And you see I've put really quite a lot on. Because what we're going to do is we're going to roll this round and smooth it in until this glitter completely covers the surface of the clay. So take your time. And what you'll find is that when you've rolled it or smoothed it in, it creates a nice solid surface of glitter. When you're done, I'm just going to rub all of this off till it gives me one full service of the glitter. So with my sheet of paper, I'm going to fold it in two. So it's a nice crease. 
now I can tap all the excess glitter off. So there's my sheet, and I think you can see there, lovely sort of um, cover of the glitter it's got all over. And now we can take our texture sheet. So with our texture sheet, face down, I'm just going to press in to this clay and the glitter acts as a release so you don't need to put anything else on your sheet. What I am going to do however, because this has got big amounts of pattern that's going to be pressed down but big amounts that are also going to be left raised up, I want to have more pressed down than is raised up if that makes sense. So I'm going to press this in in a random pattern and then go over it several times. I'm not going to get just the one image, I'm going to get several images. And this means you can use any sort of texture sheet you like because you can press it multiple times just to get a random image. So put it on Press it down and I'm going to make sure I go all over the whole amount of our clay so I can pick it up, see what we've got and just repeat. And you see there I've already overlapped some of the places I've gone. Press it down in again here. And then I'm just going to take a bit of it and just over certain areas, just press down even more. So I want a really random pattern. Make sure I've got no big areas of the glitter standing proud because we're about to pull a lot of this glitter off. And we want to make sure we've got enough pressed into the background that it's going to stay. So having done all that hard work, we're now going to put some sticky tape over the whole thing, remove all the glitter that's sitting pr proud, which will have the underneath colour of the clay showing through, and then leave the glitter in the bits, the recesses. So carefully, bit at a time, take your sticky tape, hold it nice and taut, and press it firmly over. And you should pull off and have a bit left on your tape and I'll just repeat doing that down the whole piece. So there we go, bits left with glitter in and then bits where the, um, the peppermint clay is showing through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this from the measuring sheet. As I said, this was on setting number two of my pasta machine. I'm now going to put it back through the pasta machine on one setting thinner, setting number three, putting it in that way down so that it's still the same width so I can take my cutting pieces off. As a tip, when you're removing large sheets um, of clay, you can actually half fold them up. So you're only working on a small bit and if you fold it and pull away, it's easier to get up large sheets. So there we go. And I say, I will now put this through that way in the pasta machine on setting number three. So we now have a flat sheet with a lovely glittery sheen. And I am going to repeat that with the dark blue clay with the gold glitter. And I'll bring you back when I've got both of those sheets done. So taking the template we had earlier. I'm going to lay him on my sheet and taking a craft knife, start cutting round. Again, I'm working on a measuring sheet here so I can move it easily as I go. And I'm just going to cut carefully around my template. And if you put your piece on in a fairly upright manner, so you see it was going in that direction, you should find that you can lay the next piece really close to minimise the amount of loss you're going to get on your pattern. So repeat that to give yourself four stripes and then do exactly the same on the other um, patterned veneer. So here I have all my slices cut out and from those sheets I actually was able to cut nine slices of each, so I've got enough left for another whole bauble. And also to um, interchange them with other designs if I want, so I've got one stripe of glitter and one stripe knot. Okay, so now the fun part, adding our stripes. 
to the bauble. Now we're going to want to add a little bit of liquid clay, not too much, so I get a dab on my finger. Put it over, have a wet wipe to hand, and then just push it over. Now you want to make sure, hopefully, that whatever pen you've used is staying in place at this point, otherwise you tend to get it all over your fingers and it smudges. So it's starting to go a little bit, but that's not too bad, so the lines are holding, so that's good. So wet wipe, clean your fingers, both of the liquid clay and also of any of the, um, the marker if that's come off onto your hands as well. You're going to need to have a craft knife to hand because these won't necessarily all fit on perfectly, but starting at the bottom, put your first piece on and persuade it to go where you want it to go following the lines that you drew. And this is why you need, even though your same template will probably work um, on all the baubles you do for the same size with the same um, thickness of clay, you do need to put these lines on each time. Trying to visualize it yourself is almost impossible. Trust me, I've tried. So first one on, second one on, and you just want to butt it up. Now I'm not pressing in too hard at this stage because we might well need to do some adjustments as we go further on. So not too bad, more or less staying in line. Number three. It's going up. Number four. Don't worry about it overlapping at the top, we'll chop those bits off. So that's our four pieces in. five he's a bit wide at the top there so I think I'm already going to chop him down a little bit can you see it's given me virtually no room for the one next to him so I'm just going to take him off a bit there we go see what we've got I might need to go back and take a bit more off we'll see how we go that's why I say I'm not pressing them in hard at the moment same with him so I think we are going to have to need to do a little bit of shaving off and I have to say, when I was looking at my um, finished template, I could see from experience that it was a slightly too big. But I didn't change it because I actually wanted to have these too big to show you what to do. Now that one obviously has overlapped quite a bit, but it's not too bad. So I reckon I can get away with just shaving a bit off this one. And it was only at the top end. So do the top end first and a little bit off this one. And that's that. Let's see how we're going now. It's a bit down the bottom as well, so we'll take a little bit more off him. And the great thing about polymer clay is it's always a question of just fitting it in and seeing how we're going. So he'll fit in there. Not too bad there. Can you see how I'm manoeuvring it across the middle so it sort of fits in both sides? Gaps are fine, gaps we can work with. Put him round right, so we need to chop him off now. About round to there. Okay, so that actually that wasn't too bad considering. Um, where you've got gaps, simply move the clay together. We're going to want a slight, we're going to put grooves in where all these gaps are because this is where the cord's going to fit. So don't worry too much about um, gaps, but just make sure they're not gaping. And just have a look round, make sure everything's nicely pressed down in. So it's got a bit of overlap there as well. So let's take him off and push in. A bit of overlap on this one. So it's at the tops where I'm getting most of the overlap. So you just go back, take your time, get it to a stage where it's looking pretty together. That's fine, that's, that's as neat as I need to get it because say we're about to put grooves in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop off the axis, excess at the top. I'm just using the flat of my blade just to curl round. it's fallen inside just make sure to take them out um, and now all we've got to do is to put our grooves in again make sure your hands are nice and clean or as clean as they can be if you have got any transfer um, on the surface here of the black marker pen or the whatever color marker pen you're using a little bit wet wipe but very gently you should be able to rub off the um, the color of the pen without removing the glitter so what we need to do now is we need to create a groove 
I'm going to be using the gold cord for this one because I think it'll just match really nicely with the um, gold glitter. So I do want to to create quite a nice deep groove for that so depending on the size of cord you're using you can make a shallower or deeper um, groove and starting from the top you want to make sure you have a nice deep groove at the top because the hardest place to fit the cord on because it frays is at the top so with your knitting needle just work all the way down you can see that I'm creating a nice deep groove and just repeat that all the way around the whole ball ball So I spent a little bit of extra time just at the bottom to make sure I've got some nice grooves that will go across because we're going to run the cord from one side all the way through to the other. I'm just going to slot that in. Yes, that's about perfect. So just give it a little bit of a test. And then all we need to do, working on one set of grooves at a time, take some liquid clay and our small paintbrush and I'm going to put liquid clay in the whole way down one of these grooves from one side right the way through to the other. You can be quite liberal you want a nice amount of liquid clay in there. The great thing about this rope cord, or the rope ribbon, is that because it um, opens as it pulls, it will collect the, um, clay, the liquid clay as it opens as you push it round into the grooves and sit there really nicely. So I'm going right across to the other side. really making sure I've got a lot in. So, keeping a note of which line I'm working on, I'm going to take our cord and I, I go quite a long way away from the edge because it does tend to unravel as it goes towards the edge and just pressing it in, pulling it slightly taut as I go, just sitting it into that groove that I've put the liquid clay into. And when it gets to the top end, same thing, I'm going to give myself a nice big amount of cord free at that end as well. And just repeat that for the other three grooves and I'll come back to the chatting when we've done that bit. Okay, so there we go, just cleaned my hands a bit because they're very sticky with all that liquid clay. Two areas we need to look at first, or two areas next. First is the very bottom because that's quite bulky. Can you see there where it's um, sitting proud where you've got all those layers of cord going over? So very carefully, just take your ball and just press it on the bottom. It's not going to do a lot, but it will just push it in enough just to secure those bits in. And then the last thing is just the cord around the top. You really want to spend a bit of time with your nails or with a tool, just pressing those bits in to make sure they are at the top of all of your grooves. And when they are, when you're happy that they're sitting there nicely, we'll trim them off after we've baked. Then get yourself your little pot or bowl or whatever it is you're baking in. Sit your bauble in and then I'll wrap the whole thing in a layer of foil just to protect it all during the baking and then bake that as per your manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you're using and we'll come back when that one's baked so out of the oven in the bowl 
All I need to do now is just to trim off the little bits of gold all the way around the top. And then glue on that and glue on that as well. And when I do this, what I do is I put the glue on the inside of the cap and then press it down. Less chance of the glue squishing down below it. And I will also, when I'm putting these bits in, I'll put a little bit of glue around here and then quickly pop it in and let it spring open so it sticks inside as well, just to get a little, little bit of extra support so the weight of the bauble isn't going to pull that bit out. So that's basically it, so I will bring you back when I finish doing all of that. So there we are, there's the finished bauble. So I've splayed the um, top a little bit before I put it on, just so it fits neatly around the gold cord at the top and it's all ready now to hang quite firm quite secure and that'll sit nicely with any seasonal decorations you need to then decide whether or not you want to varnish it and if you do just use a varnish suitable for polymer clay one of the brands here's a, another version I did and this one I very much kept the glitter as an opposite color to the color of clay I was using and this one I did sort of complementary colors so you can still see the design there and this one I have varnished, this one was with the, the silver surround. And then don't stop there, there's so many things you can do this. So the tutorial was really for two things, to show you the technique of putting the glitter on but also mainly to show you how to make your swirls. So having made your swirls you can do a combination, a combination of swirls and another form of veneer. So this was the, um, the leftover pieces I had from the um, pink clay and this veneer is from the Winter Petals Summer Blooms tutorial I do, which is a paid tutorial which will be available from late November 2018 and I'll put the link down below as to where you can get that if you wanted to do that but a lot of the um, tutorials I've done, the free tutorials such as the brocade cane, um, one of the petal ones the kaleidoscope canes, all of those would be really good for doing your swirls. So there's another combination there. And then also, of course, you might want to do the glitter at all. Just do completely a combination of veneers, and there's two different veneers in here, and again surrounded by the cord. So a whole host of things you can do. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, as normal, please do just tick like and or subscribe, and a huge thank you to those of you who already have it does mean a lot when everyone subscribes it means you get notification of when i do my next tutorial thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye <laughs>